think I might tap my feet. So the third album in a row that I had the privilege of producing with James for Warner Brothers was One Man Dog. Um, and what was interesting about that record was that James decided to record it in his house. That's quite common now and it's quite easy now because you take a laptop and a few mics and, and a few bits of wiring and you're, you're in. But back then, that was not the case. So it became quite a project. I consulted extensively with Phil Ramone, the genius Phil Ramone, uh, in New York before doing it. And he was the one who recommended what I should rent and take with me and so on. But I didn't take an engineer. I decided, you know, how hard can it be? I was young and, and bold. So I had James's road manager as my assistant and I engineered the half of the album that we cut at James's house in New York. We set the band out upstairs in the top in the top half of James's house then was like a big barn and, had, and there was this big air vent between the floors so we had all the cables running up the air vent but downstairs we had a huge mixing board giant speakers kind of tied to the to the beams in the house and stuff and uh, recorded there and I think about half of it was recorded in the house and then we did some overdubs elsewhere but like One Man Parade that opens the album, which is a track I really like, uh, we recorded in the house. And I remember on that one, we did more takes than I'd ever done. It was almost all live. It's James playing acoustic guitar, and then he overdubbed harmonica. Danny Korchmar playing electric guitar and timbales, which I'd forgotten, but he played the timbales. Russ Kunkel played the congas, and I played the guiro, um, apparently, with James Taylor, Alex Taylor, Hugh Taylor, and Kate Taylor the whole family except for Livingston, who might have been out on the road, singing background vocals along with Carol King and Carly Simon and Abigail Hanna singing backgrounds as well. And we did all that at, at James's house. And I think we did like a hundred takes um, over two days, uh, some of which may have been full starts, but it was, um, I was going for a very particular kind of groove. We wanted it to be really relaxed and slinky and, and congerish and stuff. And you know, that kind of thing that it, which I think the final record got. <laughs> Listening to it for real off the original tape on these great speakers, I kind of went, yeah, we, we did pretty good. It's, it, it does have that feel. It's really slinky and relaxed and cool. And James does a great vocal. He also does some great little bits of lead guitar, which you almost never hear him do but he has some little finger-picking noodles that are super cool. It's been, it's been a pleasure doing this. And then, I mean, it's kind of stuff now that I think a record company would go, really? Because there's like two or three instrumentals on it, and I don't think people would necessarily know that they want to hear a James Taylor instrumental, but turns out what they did. Chili Dog, which is kind of a silly song. Fool For You is a great song. Craig Durge playing some great piano on all of that. Percussion is called, on here she's called Miss Bobby Hall, Ms. Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall Porter, I think her name was. She was terrific. I'm sure she still is, but I haven't seen her for ages. Linda Ronstadt singing backgrounds on a song, who sounds incredible like always. Great horn section. Michael Brecker, the Brecker brothers, both Brecker brothers, George Bohannon, Barry Rogers, incredibly hot horn section. All these were all the great players in New York. And of course, famously, Michael Brecker overdubbed the, the solo for, um, don't Let Me Be Lonely Tonight, which was the hit single off this album. We did the track up on the vineyard at James's house. Then I went down to New York and had Phil Ramone record um, Michael Brecker's solo. We did two or three solos, they were all great. James was happy, we were happy, and even though it's pretty much a jazz solo, but we had a hit record nonetheless. We got past the jazz police somehow and got that record on the radio. Oh, I don't want to be lonely tonight. Anyway, a lot of cool tracks. It's been a revelation and fun re-listening to all this stuff. And some of it you do kind of go, God, it's a little sloppy compared to today's standards. But, but it does have a feel and a groove that, that is kind of hard to capture. I hear things on it, which I have to say now, if I was recording the record now, you know, in Pro Tools, as I would be, you know, there's places where the kick and the bass aren't together or the snare and the hand claps aren't together. And I kind of go, you know, fix it, and the, some assistant would be fixed. 
And I couldn't, you couldn't do that then. And I don't know, it does make you think. There's moments when I hear stuff on this record and I go, I know I would have fixed it, but I'm kind of glad that we couldn't, you know? So it's been fascinating. And I thank everybody involved for the, for the privilege of re-listening and re-hearing all that stuff. And you know, what is really the, the, the finest fidelity we can give it, you know, this, the skills of Bill and Bernie and, and all the people involved in this have, have helped us make it sound good, I think. So hope you enjoyed as much as I've enjoyed doing it. I don't want to be lonely tonight.